on everybody all right i feel like my videos uh that get a little bit more intense with theory uh tend to uh, i put a little disclaimer on it all right so so stick with it this was just kind of uh and i'll go over it as soon as the video starts but uh i was just doing an instagram live and, and just sort of riffing around over a backing track um and uh some people were asking and pretty interested in how i know you know when i'm in a minor how, uh, you know, I'm hitting the notes for the A minor chord, you know, the chord tones up here, and then it switches to G, you know, and I'm all around the neck, but I'm still, I know where each one of those chords with the A minor to G to F to E, I know where those chord tones are um, as the chords are switching, no matter where I am on the neck. And if I'm using modes to do it, which I am a little bit, uh, I'm more using um, chordal visual cues. Uh, some arpeggio stuff and some caged chord system. So check it out. What's up, everybody? Uh, let's let's jump into this. This is going to be uh, pretty in depth. Basically, what had happened was I was warming up uh, and playing this sort of style on Instagram. Um, it's sort of you know jumping around the neck, and because. Uh, a lot of the subjects that I'm teaching right now is sort of playing with intention, playing over the chord changes, uh, and, and all around the neck, somebody had asked, like, how do you know when the chord changes, how, how to play, rather than following the chord with, with each scale? What I mean by that is it's an A minor to a G to an F. It goes to an E major to make it harmonic minor, but we can keep it E minor just to make it A natural minor um, key. Uh, how instead of like, if I'm on that A, you know, if I'm here, and then when it goes down to the G, like sort of drop down to a G mixolydian and then down to, to like an F lydian and then, uh, and then so on. Uh, how can I stay here and know what I'm playing for each one of those chords? Not only that, how can I move this all over the neck without getting tripped up? as the chords are changing. So there's, there's a lot of levels to that, you know, because a lot of times, like, if we are going to do, you know, that, that the first phase might be like playing, you know, the, the A natural minor over the A minor and then the G mixolydian, you know, over the G and then so on, moving with those chords in that, in that sort of position. The next phase would, would be like, oh, I'm going to stay right here in my A natural minor and I'm going to know what notes to hit for my G what notes to hit for my F, um, and so on, and E minor, if we want to do E minor. Um, you know, that's the next phase. Now, the next one is moving that all over the neck while hitting the notes of those chord changes. So now, we're not just thinking A natural minor everywhere. We're thinking A natural minor everywhere, but moving with the A minor, the G, the F, the E minor. So let's get into to, to sort of how I visualize this and can make it like a little bit um, easy. It's sort of it's sort of attacking uh, in a in a few different angles this this one central concept of being able to do this rather than trying to push one. And what I mean by that is like the like one uh, method that a, a particular client was was doing, and I think that this is a great method to start with, is in their mind saying like, oh, and this is sort of what we. Just have talked about, okay, I'm in a natural minor, right? Okay, so that's my, my sixth mode. Um, I can jump up, you know, up here to the relative major. Now, this C major scale is going to be all the notes in that A natural minor. And then I could jump down here to G mixolydian, you know, and then even the, the F lydian and all those notes are in my A natural minor, that which is totally, that's totally fine. That gets a little bit complicated. And sometimes if that's the way that you're thinking about it, right, it's like you're really starting to, to, to force this one methodology of, of, of thinking, right, that is going to be very, very difficult then to sort of say like, all right, well, in A minor, I got my one, my, th my flat three, my five, you know, and then, and then moving that, okay, well, this is actually my flat third, fourth. okay, so there's my fifth. It starts to get really complicated. So we're going to combine this idea of, I got my A natural minor. Let's figure out where the, the, uh, the modes are in this position, but let's use 
the caged system, now we're also dealing with a minor, but the caged system uh, of chords to visualize where the chords, the chord tones are that we want to hit, okay? So, caged system, uh, really quickly, C-A-G-E-D, um, is basically using every one of those open chord forms form to, to, to find where that particular chord lies all around the neck. Okay. So let me make that a little bit easier. Let's say, uh, let's do, let's do G. Okay. So I have my G, right? So let's start with the first letter of the cage system, C. If we're taking this C chord form as a G. This is C. That's my C note. That's my root note. Okay, cool. So all I really have to do is find a G on the fifth string right, which is the 10th fret now, right, it's the same form. The only thing is, I gotta bring this nut, which is where my zero is, and that's why it's like the bar chord form, up. So I sort of have this now. That's my G chord in the C shape. Great, let's go to the next one. A, right, that's my A major. Now that's really easy because that's how we usually do these bar chords, right, kind of that way. So same idea, just find your G, and then there we go, right? There's your G. And what's really cool is the root note is the same, right? For the C and the, and the A form, right? The next letter is G. So that's pretty easy, right? That would just be my, my G form. If I did need to move this up, it would sort of look like this sort of coming up, you know, with it, you sort of do this form um, and then you sort of have to move your, your pinky down. Uh, like, let's say I was going to do an A, or I'm sorry, let's say I was going to do a C in this G form, right? I would have, like, my G form, but then I don't have anything for that bottom string, so I'd also need to match it up here. If you could do that, that'd be sweet. That's a little, little bit more difficult. Um, but in this case, it's G, so that's easy. Um, the E form, right, is just the, that's the regular bar chord that we always do, so that's easy. Right, that's my E form for a G. That's just a regular G bar chord. And then the D form is really funny. Um, the D form just sort of s pulls off of the C form that we did first, right? That's my C form G, right? That's sort of the D right there. And then you sort of like combined it with, then it sort of like moves into, or you can sort of go this other direction. Um, you know, kind of, kind of down this way, right? So that D form gets a, gets a little funny, but that's what the caged system is. It's great for finding the chords all over the neck, you know? So if I'm playing G, I can sort of visualize like, all right, if I'm in this area, I got my G here and I got my G here. Okay, great. If I start moving up, it's like, okay, I got this D form and this C. Okay, so I know where all that stuff is, right? And if you're really combining that, with the modes moving up, you never lose the chord tones. That's the goal here. All right, so that's the cage system. Now, if we were gonna do that for this chord progression, A minor, right, to G, to F, to E minor, we'll stick with E minor. Um, this is how I sort of visualize this, so I never lose where I am while I'm playing this is I've got my A minor, all right? My A natural minor scale, and I know where all those chord tones are there. Okay, great. Now, let's start moving this around a little bit. So now, if I were to go backwards, if I wanted to go backwards, right? I'm sort of visualizing this A minor here. Right, and I'm like within the, the the structure of F Lydian, right? But I got my A minor, so I can really visualize that. Perfect. Okay, great. Now the 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 tricky spot is like right up here. There's a couple notes that we need to move up. So if I were to look at this arpeggio um, here to sort of visualize the in between this A minor and this A minor would be five three. Two, two, and those two uh, for the fourth and the third string come right out of that A minor, right? Five, three, two, two on the third string, five on the third string, 
five, five. And then those last three fives come right out of this. So it sort of bridges those two so you can visualize that. Now I'm sort of in my G mixolydian position, but I know where those notes of A minor are. Okay, same thing, let's move this up. I got my C major, my relative major, right? Okay, great. Where would my A minor be? Um, I like using this form. It's basically like the bottom of a C major, but I'm gonna put my pinky down here. So it ends up being on the fourth string, a 10, nine, 10, eight. Right, and that'll be my visual for this this C form once I get up here. Right, and it's really like this D minor form. Right, my D minor sort of sort of moved up. Right, and that's what I'm visualizing, and then to move backwards, there I am. I'm right on that that A major or A minor right there. in my C major form, right? And then if I move this up just a little bit more, now I'm here, right, in this D position, there's a sort of like in between a D um, Dorian and an E Phrygian. And really what's happening here is I'm taking this form, A minor. So 12 on the fifth string, 12, 10, nine, 10, 13 on the B as well, and then 12. And I'm visualizing that now. So now if I'm in this Dorian, this D Dorian, I'm still. Right, and then that bridges me right into what we already started with. So that's what I'm visualizing. Okay, I'm visualizing this A minor, this arpeggio, my A minor here, right? This sort of weird. So I'm throwing some of those extra notes in there, but um, that arpeggio immediately up to up here. That's my whole visual for A minor. Right now, if we combine that with knowing what position of the, the mode that we're in, that's how everything becomes musical. And that's the, the step that we want to get to. That's the bulk of the lesson, right? If I go down to G now, it's just going to be the same thing that we did before. G, G, this G, this G, right? And then this sort of like, oh, you know, it's, and it's all the same. The modes are still there, okay? So I'm still A natural minor. I can bump up to like the C major to the D Dorian. The only thing that's changing now is instead of, it's now right where my G major is. Oh, it's perfect. That's an, e, that's an easy way. You know, A minor. G. Right down to my, my F. Right, I'm using that now. I'm visualizing, oh, there's my F. There's my F in my A form, F in my C form, right? F in my G form, if I wanted to do it like up here, right? Because there's my F note, and I just take like that G chord, right? Move it to my F note and sort of have this back here, right? And then E minor, It's so I'm, I'm just moving. Now I've got my E minor, I can do it wherever I see fit. That's how I'm, I'm visually doing it. So, if you can play, uh, if you can play the the caged C, A, G, uh, E, and D form of the major chords, and then just try to match that with the minor, while you're learning these modes, you're not just learning the positioning, but you're learning where the chords are going to sit in there, and then that's just how this whole thing really opens up. So, if I were to do I'm never
Right, and no, I'm never really thinking what modal position I'm in. I'm really just visualizing where these chords sit. Okay, so I want you to try to know there's a lot in that lesson. Um, so it's a little, a little bit more advanced, but I, but from from the feedback I'm getting that, that, that this is um, that you guys are going to be right on track. Same thing that I say with all my other ones. Just pause, go back, pause, go back. You got this.